All right, let's try to go down the list, both to remember who the people are and what their powers are, because this is important to review this kind of stuff. So, fire powers. Um, Uh-oh. Did I lose it already? <laughs> oh, no. It might be harder to remember than I thought. You've got the punchy powers. You levitate. Medic powers. You can use somebody else's powers. You have... Oh no, this is going to be harder than I thought. Oh no. You can teleport? Or can you teleport? Oh crap, there's so many of them. <laughs> you have item memories, you have... Telekinesis, you're tele- or, no, you're not, not, no, no, not telekinesis, you're, you're a telepath. Were you the telekinetic one? Okay, wow, this is going to take a little while to remember. Okay, not, not the first round anyway. So you're broody girl. I'm, and my character's generic protagonist, man. This is leadership guy. This is the... Um, this will probably be the obligatory quirky girl. This is tough girl. This is the smart guy trope. This is irritating rival abrasive dude guy that always seems to have long hair. This is the shy kid. This is generic female character. Basically June from 999. I am compl I have a completely inoffensive personality in any way, and I'm the most boring character in the video game. We'll see if they prove me wrong, but god damn, I'm- <laughs> They're usually using a spot. That's the one that's gonna be funny, like Seven from Type Zero. And American Tough Man Dude, who is American. Alright, I think I remember these people, kind of. It'll take a little while to get all their powers down, but we'll- we'll get there over time. We have Setup and gate. So that's how we leave. I also have the menu. You can save and load data. You can read found files or documents and listen to discovered music. Oh, we should probably save. Oh! It is an instantaneous save. That's slightly terrifying. Okay. So I don't have save slots, unfortunately. Apparently. As far as I can tell. Let's make that text speed a little fast. Yeah, just faster because it was really slow. We're good to go then. Let's try setup. In setup, you can change the status of sealed team members or change their held equipment. Status. Do I pick my crew, I wonder, or are they all going to be in combat together? Oh my god, is, is am I going to have an 11 player party during combat or do I pick a subsection of them, I wonder? Ah. That, this is a good way to review who they are now. So, I have a premonition power? I can see the future. That's Sho's power. Okay, Sho Kasugai... Gai. Or Kasugai? It's probably Kasugai. I'm never sure whether... Well, I'm never, never entirely sure whether the I is its own syllable from name to name, because it changes. So, Pyrokinesis. You were the... Yeah, you're Magneto. I gotta remember leadership Magneto guy. It even... It actually fits that they're both leadership characters within their parties. Overdrive is what they call the punchy power. Zero gravity, rejuvenation, resonance. Right, that's the that's rogue. Uh, telekinesis. You're the you're the telekinetic one. Okay, and you're the brain hacker is what they call it instead of telepath. Here's the official technical term that everyone's used to using for that term: brain hacker, telekinesis. They're all over the place here. They have pyrokinesis and telekinesis, and then they have overdrive and brain hacker. You're the dimension one, and then the sense. All right, we'll figure it out as we go. This could be really interesting. I, I, much like the game Elex that I'm playing right now, I don't know if it'll be good or bad, but it promises to be memorable, and oftentimes that's better, at least for my purposes. Gain and improve gifts. Oh, this is a skill tree. So the little head is a passive gift, attack is what you'd expect it to look like, more or less. Recovery and support. Okay, those are reliable icons, I suppose. Learning gifts and leveling them up. You can learn gifts and level them up using the gift XP you obtain at every other level. Specifically, every other level? We... Do, do we always do levels in pairs of two, and then that's when we get our experience? Interesting idea for a pattern. Uh, learning a gift will unlock the next gift in the series for future choices. Uh, locked gifts can be unlocked by leveling up earlier skills. Gift stats. 
you can check each gift stats by selecting it in the menu. You can also check which of the three branches the gift belongs to. Premonition, Clairvoyance, and Akashic Lore? Well, Premonition is of my power, right? So those must be the three parts of my... I must have three skill trees aside, atta att attached to Premonition. Clairvoyance is close, so it makes sense. Uh, as the gift levels increase, you uh, not only will its effects change, but also the required GP and sand for its use. Ah, uh, okay, so I have Sight. Raises your dex and agility. It's a passive, and that's what we're starting with. I have zero XP to spend, so that's not going to happen for now. But I just want to see this a little bit. Whoa, look at it go! Ooh. Interesting. Premonition, when attacked, you have a chance to attack first and end the enemy's turn. Oh. You can preempt your enemy's attack. Just stop it. Clairvoyance increases the range of your normal shot attacks. Kashik Lore increases crit rate of all allies. Whoa! Of all your allies? That sounds incredibly effective. So this seems to be the hardest skill to get. Daydream skips the next enemy phase and grants another ally. Whoa! Okay, I can see why that'd be the last one op uh, available. <laughs> Literally skip your enemy's turn. Uh, uses 160 GP, so I assume that it destroys your meters, essentially. And in order to get there, I have to do a fair amount. I have to go all the way down to this bottom part of the tree. And so on. And then also to this top part of the tree. So it's not the- you don't have to learn everything, but I have to learn a variety of things along the way. These are materia? Required mitigation. Required side effects. Required death's mark. Required brain hacker. Electro spark. Okay. Well, you're brain hacker, right, Yoko? Yeah. Okay. So at the start screen, it says that 11 psychics with materia uh, try to save the world, essentially, or whatever the whatever the paraphrasing. Uh, it would appear that uh, as, as various characters potentially get killed and we get their materia, that I get their powers. So if this character is voted is chosen as the traitor, then and I get the brain hacker ability, then I could go and put them give it to show over here, and he would get which one was it? Rick no, where was it? Foresight. Increases accuracy and dodge for three turns. And so different characters give you different powers. And based on that, there's probably like let's see how many are there? There's one, two, three, four, five? Only five. There's only five options total, but yeah, I have five materia things I get if I get if, if a s specific series of characters were were taken down. Okay, we'll look into that more as I actually get experience to spend. But I just wanted to take a look at it at the very least. I assume I don't really have equipment to swap out. Barrier tech, general defense unit with gri uh, gift amplifier, rank one. Yeah, nothing, nothing's gonna happen until I get more loot slash more upgrade items or something. For now, I don't think there's much to do here. Besides just learn the general sense of this thing. Look how crowded this screen is. It's gonna get so much less crowded if some of these people die, though. Selecting quests. From the gate inside the lobby, you can select a quest and engage in battle. Quests are divided into two main types, main quest and subquest. Clearing main quest will advance the story. If n a new main quest is not available, try clearing some subquests. So we have main, already finished that one. It's just called encounter. Tasked with eliminating the end, show passed out in the pillar. He awakens among allies in combat. We have suspicions, the end is filled ha has filled the sealed team with doubt, though when they move forward, the task is shaken. So then we have a subquest. Only the eleven gifted have succeeded in reaching the pillar. M measure their powers and secure the area. Let's try that. I want some experience and whatnot. Deployment menu. The deployment menu comprised of, of uh, four parts. Position. You can select the six characters that will en that will engage in pa in battle. So I have eleven characters total, and I can use six of them in combat. If I were to 
guess then I'm thinking five characters are probably going to die over the course of the game. And so by the end of the game, you probably can only use the existing characters that exist, and five will have died over the course of that, perhaps. Just doing a numbers game thing here. Details. You can check information pertaining to your quest and the reward you will receive for clearing it. Enemies. You can check the details of the quest enemies or deploy. Once satisfied with your unit placement, enter battle. You can actually check out the whole quest in advance. Okay. It just occurred to me that this game is, when I started doing the math about the final party stuff and like thinking of it in those terms, I realized that this is like a reverse pyre. Because in Pyre, you're freeing people one by one, and it's like you're you're giving them a gift of freedom, and then they're removed from your party. But in this one, you're uh, killing them for being a traitor. <laughs> Very different tone for what's essentially the same decision. And I'm, it's interesting that I'm playing two games like that in the same year when I've never... I feel like I've never played a game like that ever until now. So everybody is level six, which is meaningless to me, but there it is, I guess. That number's chosen. Uh, let's choose people. Uh, I'm buddies with you. And you. So I should probably preemptively put you in because we will be more effective as a group due to increased bond and whatnot. Let's see. You were really, really punchy. That seemed really effective. Meanwhile, let's see. It's, it's an early mission, so I probably don't need it. I feel like I don't need a healer. Here's what dimension means. And let's try Marco? Kind of just picking people at some point. Uh, it's fine. So we're securing a perimeter. Uh, those are our rewards, I think. If we get an S rank, we get a life pack. Objective is defeat all enemies, failure is to lose all allies. I don't think we have to worry about our individual characters going down as far as success goes. There's probably, not a per there's probably no permadeath in that way, but it probably affects your score, which means it probably affects the items you get. What is a fort? Oh, all I can do is know, to see what it is. I can't actually look at it to see what... I, I think that's just the soldier dude we saw before. So two, two soldiers, four drones. And they're all lower level. Let's go. Whoa, that hitch. I guess it was loading or something. Okay. Oh yeah, I think it does that thing where it only loads them when they come into frame, so it had to like hitch as I spun. All right, so we're surrounded, but really basic setup overall. Sure. Let's just enter combat range. Oops. Goddamn Zelda games and whatnot. For reprogramming what I think A and B are. 90% chance of hitting, and he will not counterattack because he's apparently a melee enemy. Got a crit. Scoring a critical hit on an opponent will allow you to deal greatly increased damage and ignore the target's defenses. Move out. So you also have a gun. Oh yeah, she's just levitating all the time. What? How is that useful to you? She does not appear to have a gift to use. I would guess that by being by levitating, she can probably go over hazards, which we that we haven't seen hazards yet in this game because this is our second mission. But I'm thinking that's going to be the re the reasoning for why she can float and why that's useful. Let's see here, assist. Yep, that's what I'm going for. There we go. Ah, oh, right, George. Was the guy he was running out with the swords, so he's a melee character. I may not be able to reach him from here. His gift is Mind's Eye. One analysis, higher damage with more analysis. So the more analysis you stack on an enemy, the more damage you do. Apparently, I kind of want to see that in action. We're gonna get countered. Okay. Be gone. It's almost down. Unfortunately, no one was in assist range. I probably should have tried to attack him from behind, because that would have been closer to my other ally. And they would have been more likely to assist, I suppose. Didn't plan that much out. Okay. Well, you're the melee character, and you'll get a counterattack if you attack. Meanwhile, your attack range... Oh, you're also a melee character, but your gift is unusable. Okay. I need to. You have a ranged attack, so you should move in first. 
Go away. Psychic based attack that cannot miss. Ooh. How big is it? That big? Power is 110. 20% sanity. Let's try it. Here I go. And now that you're in range, you might assist her. Or she won't be able to go into attack range, defeating the purpose. Whoops. That's awkward. That's very awkward. Okay. Can you reach that dude? You can. And he'll he'll assist, so there's that. Let's try using impact. Now. And away we go. Can you reach Whoa, he disappears when he moves. Okay, there's the teleport power, I suppose. So he will counter, but I have a 100% chance to hit, and there will be a an assist. Oh, a double hit. This is a nice little snappy combat system. The camera's a little close for my taste, but that's about it. So these drones have a cone-based attack, so I need to worry about grouping my characters too much or they'll get multi-targeted. Oop, you missed. Uh, you didn't. And so attacking people from behind is also val a valid tactic here. Oh, I did a attack from behind. Oh, so he attacked me. So he attacked her, and then the drone must have done an assist, and that's why he they got an, a bonus action there. Then after the drone did an assist, uh, she then did a counterattack. Okay. Okay. So if I attack with both of these characters, then my other character should help, right? Maybe I go over here? He's probably not in attack range, actually. Alright, well... You probably are in attack range, though. Wait, I don't need to go into melee range. You're a ranged character. What am I doing? Assist? Yep, that's what I want. So if I go behind, it could be a back attack. And the assist is still going to happen. Yep, back attack and critical. There we go. And, uh... You're just gonna take him out at this point. There's no reason to even use Mind's Eye. You're fine. Alright, this side this side has been victorious. This side's a little slower in that we have to deal with the fact that these enemies have... You're just gonna be down. Uh, these, these characters have melee attacks only, which is something I need to... I need to memorize which ones are ranged and which ones are melee so I can get a good balance for some of these formations. Otherwise, I could potentially be getting myself in some trouble. Counter and assist. This is a back attack. Nope, not quite. Too slow. Taking a hit. I need to. But now that's gonna get an assist from you. Except he'll be dead. What's my rank? How do these ranks work? What do those numbers mean? Oh, we got an S rank. Rushing the battlefield? Oh, is that a tent? The achievement? It I think it was a tent, but it looked like pants, and I was like, what? Uh, what do those numbers mean? Is the number of number of attacks they did? The amount of experience they got? I don't know. We get so we took two turns. Our, res our reward is 500 energy, 2,000 experience, and a life pack. Oh. So you got two assists, you got six kills, three kills, three kills, three kills, three kills, and three assists. Interesting. So a kill and assist both equally count towards this battle result total. 
And due to the fact that the game gave me no other numbers on the screen, like no like time number, well, number of turns is there, I think that assists are heavily rewarded here. Because an assist is a kill that's basically counted twice looking at this number system. Like this guy got three kills, three assists, and that counts it as just six. But those three assists he got were also somebody else's kills. So if you, you want to get an assist, if you want the count, if you want the kill to count for two points to go towards this total, because I assume that your your total number versus your turn count is what makes your rank happen. I think, maybe. How much does people need? How much do people need to level up? Thirty-eight hundred. So no one's gonna level up. Arsh, don't get a single level out of the first mission you play in this game. Oh. You guys also got experience, so I don't have to worry about people out-leveling each other too hard, generally. Seems I- they missed out on 400 out of the 2,000. I didn't actually see what the number that was there at first. I hear something. I don't want to- We're surrounded by enemies. <laughs> don't burn. Was that... everyone's voices? That could be the beginnings of a clue about the traitors. I'm gonna have to try to remember what goes on there. Okay, so now I can increase the bond with Jimeno, Mana. Oh, is it all the people? No, it's not the people I took with me. It's just a weird sort of configuration of them. And nobody particularly likes me right now. Let's see if I can go further down. Also, I like that this character uses a gun. What is the meaning of this? To think a town was swallowed by a building. Besides, such a change is unbelievable. You're right. True. I didn't expect the pillar's interior would be like this. We encountered non-human foes, and everyone has no recollection of the moment of our infiltration. That is the situation. Common sense dictates we should withdraw, but we can't even find an exit, let alone communicate with the outside. All missions from this point on will be at our discretion. Although, I suppose this situation could have been assumed to a certain extent prior to our time of infiltration. Oh. It's actually going deeper here. Okay. Yeah, I figured I'd double up on her because I'm trying to see if I can get the face to change to a different icon and progress to the next level. I probably won't invest too heavily in individual characters because I don't know which ones will be alive, ultimately. So I'll probably diversify mostly, but I wanted to see one of them go further. What is it? What is it? Is there something I can help you with? I want to talk for a bit. I don't mind. Let's be off then. Hmm. Now then, what shall we talk about? If I may, I'd like to discuss preparations and whatnot for the upcoming battle. So she's all battle focused and pragma pragmatic and tactically thoughtful and I mean, <laughs> tactically driven or something. I, I, I did not have a, that phrase planned out when I started saying it. <laughs> I feel like we can use your knowledge as reference. May I hear your thoughts? Yes. Yes, of course. What's, imp what's important is how well we can apply our strength as one organized unit. As a unit, huh? That may be difficult for a hastily built team like ours. Indeed, our skills and experience all dif differ too severely. Keeping a pace with one another won't be an easy task. But... However, our strength as a team can expand due to our individual specializations. If we can effectively use our powers under precise guidance, our upcoming battles won't be as dangerous. You're right. You're quite something. No. This isn't anything special. The difficulty t lies in its application, not the theory. In that regard, I think you're doing really well. I'll be counting on you from now on. I see. I see. I better not let you down as much as possible then. If we were to discuss anything else, I suppose it'd be about the traitor. That topic's unavoidable. But... In my opinion, I haven't seen anyone slacking off in battle. Everyone's frantically struggling. Rather, I question if a traitor really does exist. 
There may not be one. That's true. There's a possibility that what the end said is a trap to throw us off, but... No. No, it's probably wise to disregard this line of thought. We should avoid a worst-case scenario where we're caught unawares. You're right. True, we'd want to lessen the impact of betrayal during a critical moment as much as possible. That said, if... <laughs> At the, at the same time, a worst-case scenario is randomly believing something that your foe just throws out there to throw you off balance, because he just he just says it. You're like, yeah, I'm totally. One of you is he's a totally a traitor. Believe me. And then we just believed him, which is concerning. Yes. Either way, there's too much we don't know about our current situation. To begin with, why would the traitor take the same action as us? Does the traitor have his or her own reason for climbing this tower? <laughs> There are too many unknown variables. This isn't going to be a straightforward battle. I'm glad we got to talk, Nagi. Huh? Are you saying our conversation was helpful? Yeah. Yeah. I got to learn a lot. You're a reliable person. Huh, I see. It's not so bad hearing those words. And likewise, I'm glad we got to chat. Oh. The symbol said it was deepening our bond, but her face expression did not change. By which I mean the little, the little emoticon creature, like not her, not her three D face, but the little, fa little faces that are by her, the names. I thought they, I thought it might change to a different symbol. Maybe it takes more work than that. Let's meet Douchey McDouchington. Zenji Maeda. I thought the end was her only target. There's others we have to fight too. You're right. Yeah, a lot of humanoid enemies. Uh. And mechanical ones, too. They're all a bunch of pushovers, though, for me. I'm Knuckles the Echidna, is basically my personality. Well, we don't know what's in store for us, so uh, don't let your guard down. Ha! I don't need anyone telling me that. And yet we're friends now, apparently. <laughs> and now it's just... Who doesn't get the vote, but still has dialogue. I wonder what this room is. I can't imagine that this place existed before the pillar's appearance. Did the end arrange it? Or was it here from the start? Mm. What is this room? It's as if it was made to welcome us in. I wonder if this is part of the end's performance. Is he turning us into pawns and acting like he's playing a game? You're right. This must be the case. This may be the case. Well, I'll just use whatever's available to us. Anything just lying about. When you're about to check something you're unsure of, give me a call, okay? Are you concerned about me? Cheers, mate. Get it? She's British. So she says, cheers, mate, and bugger, and bird. <laughs> How are you feeling? The end seems to have manipulated our memories when he welcomed us into this place. My memories from when we infiltrated the pillar are a bit foggy. Where did we enter from? And who are we with? But... Judging by our situation, the eleven of us were the only ones who made it inside. What happened to the rest of Sealed? Did they get locked out? Or did they come back- uh, did they come before us? I wonder if six of us are real sealed members and five of us are, are fake sealed members that are all secretly traitors and they re what if they he, he could have like dampened the memories of the real members and replaced the memories of the traitors essentially so that no one no, no one can tell who is who which is necessary because my character has premonition powers and Yoko has tele telepathic powers, so you couldn't have the traitors know they're traitors. But the, well, that makes me wonder how they can be how they can be traitors though and do that though. <sighs> George, when you mention psychometry, wait a minute. They no more, show. I know it well. Psychometry is indeed the power to read the residual thoughts that dwell within objects. So earlier, I tried searching for the pillar's memories. However, it's no use. I don't know why. It almost feels like this pillar's thoughts are too huge. Huh? Too huge? Hmm. Indeed. And on top of its size, I can't even decide what kind of thoughts it is. Thought it is. Curses. 
I might go crazy if I use my abilities carelessly. I see. 